Hey guys, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate you guys popping in here. Uh, thanks replay viewers for watching and YouTube viewers. Uh, thanks for joining me. We are making hourglass, hourglass blocks. Uh, we made a few of them yesterday. We made nine of them yesterday. And uh, look how shiny. I have this super shiny, sparkly fabric. <laughs> it's, the, it's so fun to use. Uh, but tonight, we are going to make more crazy patchworky ones where it's not so mirror image looking. You know, like two lights, uh, two darks of the same color. Now we're going to kind of mix them all up. So I have all my triangles ready to go and we're going to just mismatch them today and soak. So this is a huge sewing day. We're going to have a huge long chain of these blocks. Uh, I'm excited to get started. Uh, it'll feel like we've made a lot of progress, I think, today with all with all the uh, the sewing <laughs> since yesterday. It was mostly pressing, so we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to get get working on it tonight. Thanks again for coming in. Uh, if you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 9:30 p.m. Central. I'm actually going to be giving away this quilt. Once I'm finished, I in the description for this video, there is a link if you wanted to enter to win it. So uh, that will be, we'll do the drawing for that when we are finished. And we'll do the drawing in the Penguin and Fish Crafters page on, on Facebook. So just if you search for, or, or it's a group, a private group. If you search for Penguin and Fish, Penguin and Fish Crafters should pop up. Just click that and uh, join there and I will let you guys in. Feel free to share your project that you're working on, any projects uh, or your your hourglass quilt if you're doing that and I'd love to check it out. So thanks so much for coming in. I see y'all popping in. Let's get going. I want to get as many of these sewn as possible tonight and maybe start pressing them. Uh, so let's do that. All right guys, flipping you around. Here we are, and here are all the ones that we worked on last night. Ooh, I think my camera might fall. Hold on. There we go. All right, so let's get sewing. Here are all the ones that we did last night. So quick. I just want to look at them. They're so fun. I am excited to be working on all these again. I love these blues together. We went to sparkly, sparkly fabric. That was pretty. Okay, so these are our finished ones, and uh, this is we're gonna make a lot like this tonight. So we have the stack, and uh, they're kind of organized, but I don't want them to be organized. At this point, I just wanna kinda grab and go, I, and I want them all to be different. So I'm just gonna kinda shuffle them up. <laughs> I suppose there's better ways of doing this, but this is fun. So I'm gonna just grab two, there we go, and put them together. And since we've already organized, uh, our pile. So like here's our other pile. I have a whole other stack of these. This is my dark to light pile. See all the darks on, are on this side, all the lights are on this side. So when we put these together, we just rotate one and it creates, it creates our hourglass. So we have to start with them all, all the darks on this side, all the lights on this side, uh, all similar. This one, this stack was all the lights on one side, on the left side, and on the darks on the right side. So it was the opposite. So we have to keep those separate. So these are all the lights and darks. So when we rotate one, we get that crisscross effect, that mirrored effect. So, all right, grab this one. I want one different. That's the same. We'll go with this guy. And since we pressed both of them to the dark side, both of the seam allowances to the darker fabric, when we put them together, we will be able to nest the seams, which means we are just bumping those folds up against each other, just right like that. They'll just kind of fit together and you can actually feel feel like where it can't move anymore because it's hitting that other fold. Uh, and then we're just gonna kind of line up our edge and we'll be good to go. The reason we're bumping these together like this, the folds, nesting the seams, that is what this is called, is because that helps us get a perfect point in there. So, so our, uh, all our lines, uh, line up. So, all right, let's, so, like I said, I'm just going to grab from here. 
Uh, I'm gonna try and do a different one, so I'll just grab and grab. Okay, these are different, we're good to go. If I end up with two, like if these are my last two and they're the same, that's okay. I don't mind if I have ones that are, are the same either, so. Fun. Oh, and you know what, guys? I'm going to share this really quick uh, with the Penguin and Fish Crafters page, just because I know there's some people watching in there. Uh, so just give me a moment. Uh, if you uh, wanted to share this video, too, if you have someone who wants to learn how to make these blocks, uh, have them check out the last couple videos I did share. Hold on. I've got, I'm sharing it right now. Share to a page. Just give me a sec, guys. Share in a group. Penguin and fish crafters. Okay, post. All right, guys. So now if you're in the penguin and fish crafters group, it should be going on there as well. So let's get going. I'm going to nest these seams together again. Oh, I'm glad you like the colors, Faye. Yeah, I'm excited to see it finish too because it's going to be kind of all mashed together, uh, kind of patchworked. I'm not, I'm not having it be all, um, you know, clean and perfect. Like you could really, really use these hourglass blocks to make something really clean and crisp. Like if you used like all the same lights and all the same darks or some really light lights, really dark darks like this. I mean, this is pretty crisp and clear. Um, I am doing more of mixing it all up like this, so mine's going to look a little more patchworky overall. You're not going to be able to see the lights and darks as well, probably, but eh, I'm playing around, experimenting. Hello, Leah. Hello, Linda. Thanks, you guys, for coming in again tonight. I'm excited. Tonight, we're just going to keep cruising along here, just chain piece these. I'm going to grab two more. There we go. Those are different. Again, nesting the seams, and there we go. I'm just, you could pin these or use a wonder clip. Oh, you guys, I didn't turn you guys yet, sorry. There we go. Use something to hold these together for you. But I, I think this works just fine. I'm nesting the seams and then I'm holding that seam with my finger there, and then I'm just getting started. That seems to work well enough. And if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Oh, thanks, Lurie. I appreciate that. Yeah, and you guys, if you have any questions ever, like if I say a term or something, you know, like a fat quarter or a seam allowance, or if you don't know what something means, just shout out. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm more than happy to uh, talk about it. Because it sucks when uh, when you just hear all these terms and, 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 you know, you feel left out or don't know what something means. So, yeah, I'm more than happy to talk about whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm just playing around. I'm learning things every time I, every time I come on here, I feel like I learn something, something from you guys. And one of the reasons I love doing this. <laughs> it's like uh, a free class for me. You guys just, uh, you guys keep teaching me stuff and I don't know, I feel, uh, well, I was talking about this with the Splendid Sampler when we were working on that because I feel like I learned so much from that, just from the whole process and, uh, you know, chatting with you guys and learning from other designers and, and it's just, uh, it's just neat to all be learning together and then we can put it in practice right away, which is fun. I think I didn't quite nest these. I'm going to try and force it a little bit. There we go. You can kind of feel when those folds are bumping uh, next to each other. Grab some more. I'm sure a few of these will be the same, but that's okay. Oh, you're so nice too, Deborah. Awesome. All right. Bump these ones together. 
I mean, really, if you wanted, you could uh, nest all these beforehand and pin all of them, or you know, have a stack of perfectly pinned, ready to go things. But um, I'm I'm just holding them there as I go. If I can avoid pins, that's that works for me. But if you like using pins, totally go for it. Ooh, I think these are pretty together. You guys, I think it's going to be up to 90 degrees tomorrow here. It was for sure pretty high 80s today. Ugh. People don't realize in Minnesota it, it gets super hot and, and muggy like this. They just think super duper cold, which it gets that too, but man. It can switch 60 degrees overnight sometimes. Like we could go from 40 degree weather to 80 degree weather, no problem. Which is kind of nuts. But the garden's liking it. Everything's growing like crazy. So after we get done with this stack here, I'm going to just start right up with that second stack. But remember, I'm keeping them divided because then I can just grab like this and I always know that I have a light dark, light dark, and that's what I need. Because if I flip it like this and it's not a light dark, light dark, then both the lights will be on the same side and the darks will be on the same side. So I need I need to have those separate piles. Oh, it was 89 there by you, Rosalie. Whew, yeah. Oh, and you're having a storm tonight in Calgary. We, went, we had uh, some thunder after I got off of the, uh, off of, Facebook with you guys yesterday, it started thundering and lightning, but I think it just, we just had like a few drops of rain and that was it. There's more show than anything else. Uh, I think I lost my uh, nested seam here again, let me try to get that. Yeah, you could just wonder clip this whole thing beforehand and that would make it pretty easy too, but I'm skipping that step. So I have to admit that I am not especially looking forward to the next step of this, or two steps from now, really. Uh, we Next we'll be pressing it open, which is fine. I'm not wild about pressing, but uh, you know, we'll do it. And uh, But after that, we are gonna trim all of these down uh, so it's they're nice, perfect squares. So we're going to trim all of these down to uh, four and a half inch blocks. And uh, that is a lot of trimming for all these blocks. But you know what? You, you start doing it assembly line style and then it's, then it's not so bad, really. Need some embroidery in your life today? Oh, working on blossoming block 31 of the Splendid Sampler. Nice. I will be doing a pile of embroidery this weekend. I'm headed to my parents' house, which I am excited about. My brother is still in town before he heads to Australia for their winter skiing season. He he, uh, he moves and sculpts snow for uh, the terrain park. Uh, he drives one of those big, uh, big cats. Oh, you know what? There might be frogs there. You're right. So I will be sewing on location there. Uh, which I've done before, and uh, <laughs> what Marianne's talking about is uh, this time of year, maybe not quite yet, but maybe uh, when the windows are open when I'm at my parents' house, you can hear all the frogs. They kind of live out in the woods, so and they have like a little water thing where some frogs live, and you can hear the frogs singing. Oh, that would be so nice. I hope I hope we can hear them singing tomorrow night. That'd be fun. But yeah, so I will be sewing there tomorrow night. Although it might not be sewing, it might be a whole lot of trimming. <laughs> uh, and then Saturday and Sunday, I don't usually do a live stream. However, um, I'm going to be bringing my splendid sampler quilt to... Oh, you've been hearing them in the evenings. 
I'm gonna bring my splendid sampler quilt so I can sandwich it together. Uh, sandwich it meaning uh, I have the back of the quilt and then you put the batting on top and then the, the front of the quilt on top of that and then you baste it together, uh, which basically means just, just holding it together somehow. I'm gonna use pins, uh, those bent safety pins to baste my quilt. And uh, I'll be doing that while I'm there, I'm hoping so, at least, because their floor is a whole lot bigger than mine uh, to fit my large quilt. So I'll be sure to to check in with you guys while I'm doing that, because I want to show you kind of the process of what I'm doing for that as well. So we might have a little weekend pop-in that's a little different than usual while I'm doing the split and sample quilt. But then Monday, I should be back here and uh, we'll keep going on, on this hourglass quilt. But we'll want to start quilting our the splendid sampler quilt, so I'll have to we'll pop that in too. We'll have to figure out how we want to schedule that. But I think we're gonna I, I think I'm gonna finish this uh, this quilt first. This is kind of my cleanse the palette with a quick relaxing uh, quilt that I still am learning and trying new things with. So <laughs> I mean, that, that's. It's a, it's a palette project cleanser before I get started on all that quilting with, with the Splendid Sampler. So I think we'll, we'll finish this before doing that again. Oh, yeah, it's so fun, Wanda. Uh, she did the Splendid Sampler quilt, too. Uh, so maybe I'll... I don't know if she is, like, readily available, but maybe we can get that out and I can show you guys her, her quilt again. Hers is basically quilted and bound. So hers is technically done, but she's adding hand stitching uh, over it just for fun because she's having it in their trailer. So, uh, or they're, they're like RV. So when they're on the road, she can work on it a little bit still just by doing the hand stitching. But I think physically as a quilt, it is done. All right, this is the last from group one of these things. So next up, oh, <laughs> so next up we have pile number two. So this was the pile where it was the darks on one side and the lights on the other. This was the opposite of that. So same sort of deal. Now I can just take these and if I rotate one, then we'll have our light and dark uh, mirror each other. So that's, that's why I had them in separate piles because I didn't want to like, oh, does this one fit together? I know they're going to fit together because it's all the darks on one side, all the lights on the other. So we're ready to go to keep going here. Um, we just need to mix them all up again. So I'm just going to kind of grab and stitch however it works again because I'm liking, I'm liking, you know, where it's different things. This one has actually two of the same here and then two different ones there. That's kind of cool. That's neat that, that that's going to happen every once in a while. But I do like that they're all Mixed up. Oop, here's another equal one. It's gonna be so fun to see what they look like. Oh yeah, so here's one where they're all where they're all different, but it, it still has kind of a light feel and kind of a dark feel. And you can exaggerate this a whole lot more, like go way lighter and then way darker for these, so it reads dark and light a whole lot more. Because like for example, this one, this one doesn't really read very light like this is more of a medium it looks more like this blue in tone than this white or this uh light blue sparkly blue but i wasn't going into this project uh with that really in mind i had just purchased these fat quarters i bought six fat quarters on a whim for fun because fabric fever took over me and i needed to buy them and um then I thought I'd just try and do this project with them. So some of them aren't totally super light and the others aren't totally super dark. But that's okay. We're doing more of a patchworky mishmash. But it really is sharp when you have really light ones and really dark ones with, with this, uh, with the hourglass block. But I think overall, all will probably end up with a similar effect, I think. We'll see. That's... That's the adventure, I guess. 
Um, I, my only plan going into this project was, this is a neat way to make hourglass blocks. I want to give it a try. And I bought these six fat quarters and I need to use them so I don't feel guilty <laughs> for buying them. Uh, so, so we're making an hourglass quilt out of them and I get to learn a cool, fun way to do hourglass blocks and uh, use up my fabric. Do you really need to trim? Um, I am going to trim just because I think overall it'll be uh, easier to sew together. I mean, right now I think they're they're kind of a funny size. Um, like they're, I don't know, four and seven eighths, but you know, they're pretty wobbly and stuff too. Never feel guilty for buying fabric. I know, right? So they are the bias, uh, which is that 45 degree angle that's really stretchy on fabric is all on the edge. So they are all going to kind of be a little stretchy and wonky the way that we made these blocks, which is fine. We just have to be careful not to really pull on it as we sew. Uh, it's not so bad now when we're sewing them together, but when we're sewing these squares together. So what I wanted to do is just really get them nice and trimmed up so I can kind of manage their edges a little bit more. I think I'm going to end up with four and a half inch blocks. So I have a four and a half inch uh, ruler here and we'll end up finding the center point of these blocks and then trimming all the way around. I'm gonna use my rotating cutting mat, so it, it won't take forever. Uh, we won't have 90 things to press this time or, or trim this time. It'll be half that, I guess, because we're, we're combining the two now. But yeah, it'll take some time, but I think it will be, I think it'll be worth it trimming them down a little bit. That's our superpower. Cut up perfectly good fabric and put it back together. Hey, I'm with you, Felicia. That's that's a good good point. You take raw materials and transform it into something that didn't exist before. And in our case, they're utilitarian too, which I think is a cool bonus to making stuff. Be really kind of neat when we're done. I love this like massive chain of, of sewing things though. I think that's fun. Oh, you're doing your squares and watching me too. Awesome, Sherry. Yeah, you guys, if you're working on this or really any project, I'd love to see what you're working on. Uh, make sure to join the Penguin and Fish Crafters uh, Facebook group. I think I have a link in the description here. I can't quite remember if I did that or not. Uh, but click join for there and feel free to show, to share what you're, what you're working on. I'd love to see how your hourglass progress is going or, or what, what you're working on right now. What I was saying yesterday, I'm, I'm really finding it Super relaxing just to have a quilt that's just all one simple block and I just do the one thing on every piece of fabric before moving on to the next step and I it uses my brain enough to need to stay focused and, and all that still but oh man it, it can just chill out a little my brain I don't have to think all I'm doing is the same motion over and over again and that's really relaxing I, it makes me think that I'm going to do a whole lot more block or a whole lot more quilts that it's just picking a neat block and um, doing a quilt that's just all, all that block. I'm just enjoying how soothing it is really. Ooh, making a mystery metal quilt now. Oh, you're in the making. Yeah, that's kind of why I'm doing this quilt too. I just, I need a quilt. I need to work on a quilt that's not a year in the making, you know? Oh, working on an embroidery quilt with a high tea theme. Oh, that sounds cute. High tea theme. Oh, Felicia, uh, your quilt with the numbers, is that what you're referring to? I checked it out. It looks great. It's so neat to finish something. 
<laughs> you know? Uh-oh. I think my machine's eating my triangle a little, but I think we're back on track. I think I'm just getting a stack backed up here. Yeah, it looks awesome. I love how you offset the numbers and stuff a little bit, too. Yeah, if you guys ever want to share share what you're working on, too, you can just you can email me. I, I totally, totally love just to see people making. I mean, not everyone does that, you know? <laughs> not and everyone can comprehend uh, that you can actually use your hands to, you know, make something that didn't exist before. Like, that's such a foreign concept, you know? So the more people making stuff and being creative and trying things and all that, I think is pretty neat. Alright, this pile's getting smaller too. I'm excited to start seeing what these all look like. I think we're going to have time to press these open tonight too. At least a few of them. If Facebook uh, keeps being nice to us tonight. Oh, you tell your mom a beginner, 12 quilts later. You know, I... I guess I felt like a beginner until... Until after doing the Splendid Sampler. I don't know, I feel like I can hold my own a little bit now after doing, uh, working on the Splendid Sampler. Just because we did so many different techniques and I did... If you didn't know, guys, I did... I did every block for the Splendid Sampler. They're on the, the second way through, but the first way through I did every block live here as well. They're all on my YouTube page, but they're funny. Uh, when you watch the earlier ones, I mean, compared to the last ones, I think you can definitely tell that I learned a lot along the way. And man, I mean, with quilting, there's always something to learn. So, I mean, I, I, think, it's a, I think everyone feels like a beginner somewhere in quilt land, for sure. Even if they're a total professional and know everything there is to know about one part of it, I'm sure there's a whole other part that they don't know how to do at all. This one you're working on. Oh, quilt cool, does he go. See, I okay, Felicia, I've never done that either. That's something we should do on here sometime. I love doing things here that I where I would just want to try an idea out or there's a new technique to learn or, you know, that I haven't learned before. And I haven't done a quilt as you go ever. And I, it's still kind of like a weird foreign concept. I'm, I don't quite understand how it's assembled. <laughs> uh, so that'd be fun to do. I would do a quilt as you go thing here sometime. I am planning a designer series. Uh, I'm hoping to get an email out to you guys probably mid-month about that with uh, the first projects, the first few projects that we'll be working on. But I'm uh, I'm uh, working on uh, projects from other designers and with their permission, I've, I've talked to them, and uh, we'll do some things there, and that'll be a whole fun learning thing. So I will... For the design, de designer series, I'll definitely let you guys know ahead of time, uh, several weeks, so you know what's coming up in case you wanted to make it too. I know uh, some of the designers will be having kits available, and I don't know, I just love trying new things and learning, learning new stuff. So there's some fun projects that I've lined up with some designers. Uh, I think they'll be fun. And we'll do some more stitch alongs coming up too. Like we did the the bunny stitch along. I don't know. I think some of you did that with me uh, for for my bunny embroidery kits. Uh, I have a couple of new things that would be fun to stitch with you guys, and so we'll have a few more embroidery stitch alongs coming up soon too. Sometimes it's nice just to trade off mediums. Like sometimes. Oh, bow tie block, that sounds so cute, Diane. Sometimes you just 
need to do something else, you know? Sometimes it's like, I can't deal with the sewing machine anymore, I just need to knit something, you know? Or I don't want to make another huge quilt, I want to make, you know, a small little bag, you know? So uh, it'll be fun to just, I think it'll bring some variety into some of the things that we can try out, which will be neat. And then we'll be working on some fun little random projects like this, too. When I get possessed by the fabric again. Oh, you're gonna do another funny embroidery. Oh, that's awesome. What are you uh, making out of it? If you do make another one, um, be sure to share. I want to see it. I love seed seeing everyone's work. I think we're going to have a lot of these where two of the fabrics end up being the same and two different in these, but I think that's going to be kind of cool. The ones we did last night, oh, not sure yet. Oh, you're knitting a dishcloth. I have some unfinished knit uh, dishcloths that I'm knitting too. It's kind of in my, if we're watching a movie, work on this craft project <laughs> basket. That's sitting by the TV. Oh, you started out with, as a lap, lap quilt, but I grew in size. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that's what's going to happen to this quilt a little, Felicia. I think, um, I think if I did the math right the other day, I think we're going to end up with 48 of these blocks, which I don't think that, I think we're, it's not going to be like that huge. I mean, we did only start out with six fat quarters. Uh, oh yeah, that little bag with the bunny, that was so cute. Alright, we are almost done here. But yeah, so I don't actually think that this quilt is going to be that big. However, there's a whole lot we could do. I was playing with the idea of maybe having squares in between each one. So we could, I mean, that would basically double the size of the quilt, like ha offset it. So have like an hourglass block, uh, then just like a white square or a cream square or something in another hourglass and then offset it. So square, hourglass, square, uh, instead of just all the hourglasses mashed up to each other. But I don't know. I like the idea of them all mashed up too. And you could do four of them that are the same and put a little border around and then do another four and a border. I mean, you could do just anything with these blocks. So I went, uh oh, I'm like, that looks funny. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't thought that far ahead yet, <laughs> which is weird. I don't think I've ever done a quilt. I was saying this yesterday, but I don't think I've ever worked on a quilt where I didn't have it figured out completely beforehand, or just a general idea of what the plan is. All I wanted to do with this was try this our last block thing and, and use up this fabric, and we're kind of past that point now. <laughs> so now I gotta figure out what the actual quilt's gonna be, but we'll wait till we get all our all the elements ready. Once we get these pressed and trimmed, then we can start really digging into what we want the design to be. But that not having a plan, I think is really making this more playful for me. Like it just like more, more relaxed actually. Which seems like the opposite. Like it seems like that should maybe stress me out, like not knowing. But I don't know. It's not. It's okay, whatever this ends up being. I'm not like emotionally attached to how it ends up. I'm just excited to see where it goes. That's a fun feeling compared to how it is sometimes when you work on projects. And you just are always thinking about what it's gonna be like in the end. All right, just two more to go here. Yeah, we can get the, a semi-mystery quilt. There you go. <laughs> exactly that. So yeah, if uh, if you're stitching this with me, 
and expecting more of a plan. <laughs> uh, the plan part is over. <laughs> now we're gonna just we're gonna see what happens. But we'll talk about a few ideas. See, um, see what some different ideas might look like, and I don't know if we can all decide our own plan. That moment when you knew you messed up, realized I was out of Bob and Thread. Oh, ch tension links later. I gotta look. That's always the worst, isn't it? I made sure to put more, I, I, I filled up a whole new bobbin when I started this because uh, I had to switch thread colors from what I was working on. So I was pretty confident we'll get pretty far with it, but oh god, isn't that the worst? An alarm or something needs to go off that says for the bobbin. <laughs> that tells you, hey, I'm out of, I'm out of thread. Oh, bummer. <laughs> That sucks, Sherry. All right, we have the ender on here. We are done with those. Awesome. All right, let's let's trim them all up. We have this huge chain of them now. Like a whole never-ending chain of them. Look at them all. Ah! This is the fun part. This is the fun part of the process when you sew all these together. I'm just trimming them all out, and then we will press them. And I've been pressing them in that little kind of pinwheel style where they're all kind of pressed around, and we get that fun little square in the middle. That just kind of makes the whole thing lie a little flatter. So we'll do, do that with all these as well. Oops, I lost my end. Here we go. And I'm just kind of putting them all the same direction, because then when I grab in the iron, it's consistent. and. I can just grab it, not think. I don't have to twist it around in, in the place because it's rotated funny. Oh, it's going to be neat to see all the little combinations. Oh, thanks, Judith. Yeah, I raided the fat quarter bin at uh, SR Harris, which is the fabric store that I went to last week, Thursday. And um, Oh, I knew I was in trouble when I started there. I, I found the gold, this cream sparkly with the gold sparkles in, and then I'm like, oh my god, I need to find every every uh, fabric that is sparkly in here, and for some reason I just, I don't know, I needed to sew something with all the sparkles. So that's what we're doing. I was hypnotized by the shiny stuff. I should have been counting these. I don't, I'm not quite sure how many we have, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to do math. That's no fun. We'll just press. Let's see where we got here. A few more, I think. Oh wait, no. There's a whole pile under here yet, hiding underneath, hiding underneath the uh, ironing board. Dang. Yeah. There's a lot of these. Yeah, so I think I'll have 48 in all. Okay, I'm doing the math. One, two, how many did we get done? I think we have 10 done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, so we probably have 38 here then. If, if um, we end up with 48, which that math could be wrong. I was trying to do the math of what we would have earlier today, and my earlier math would be wrong, but in theory, we should have 38 guys to press here, so we have 48 total. Oh, 30 so far. Okay. All right, that's it right there, so let's press these. This is awesome. I didn't think we'd get all the way to, to pressing tonight, so let's, uh, I washed the key. He's good to go. Um, hopefully, the iron doesn't freak out uh, the phone. Oh, you've been doing the 100 days, 100 blocks. Oh, nice. 38. So there's 38. Okay. So that means we have 48 squares total, and they'll they'll be four and a half inches. So that's, that's four inches finished. 
what's, what would that be? I don't know. Depends what size quilt we want to do. Right, my iron's just kind of turning on here yet. There we go. So I'm just pressing it to one side to get it started, and then I'm just pulling that seam open. Just pulling that open, and then we'll press this one so it's going that, that direction. So they're all kind of going to the left now, clockwise. The seam allowances. All right, so hopefully, I think what I was saying earlier, hopefully my iron doesn't freak out my phone. Uh, I think my phone has not been doing well when I don't have the air conditioning on, like when, it, when it's just too hot in here. Uh, there's one of them, look, it's so fun. Uh, when it's just too hot, I think it's it's just freak out. It conks out and says it's overheated, which never did before, which makes me unhappy that it's doing now. But it is warm and muggy. So hopefully the iron will be okay. Whew, hot. This is gonna be like a surprise every single time. Oh, so six by eight blocks would be 24 by 36 inches. So that's not all that big. Um, so thanks, Diane, for, for doing the math of. Uh, so that's like a, that's a, a yard and a little less than the yard. So it's almost, yeah, it's smaller than a yard cut of fabric. It's about half that, yeah, really. Um, so, look at this one, cute. So it would be kind of fun maybe to put a block in between each one. That would definitely enlarge it to more of a lap size. But, you know, this is more of like a baby blanket size in theory, but I don't know. These colors maybe aren't super baby-ish. It might be fun to, to add, add a block. I don't know. You could also just add super big borders, which might be kind of really fun, too. The only sad thing about adding, adding, um, a block in between each one, or adding borders or sashing, is that none of it would be sparkly. <laughs> but hey, maybe that'd be a way to have the sparkles come out more. Like if we frame it with non-sparkly fabric, or if we have, you know, if we have a squares next to it that aren't shiny, maybe that'll make the shininess come out a little bit more, you know? So maybe that's a good strategy. I don't know, we'll grab some fabric uh, once we get a little close to that point and see what it would look like, we'll we'll put the put the blocks next to each other, rotate them around, um, see how we like that, and then we'll put some fabric around it like a border. See if that looks like something, or put some fabric in between them. See if that looks like something, and then we'll just decide. Oh, that's something we could embroider. Uh, I do have metallic floss, embroidery floss. So we could, uh, that might be kind of interesting. We could have all of the blocks in the center, like mashed together, which is kind of what I originally wanted. But then we could do big, super plain borders, and then just do like a running stitch around it with like sparkle floss, like way by the binding or something, so that there's just this hint of sparkle off on the edge. That could be kind of cool. Like a big, like white, or like a cream, Maybe a cream colored like that. Oh, there is kind of a lot of white in here though too. So maybe a white or a cream, like that gold sparkle. Um, yeah, just a big old frame around it, big old border. And then do some hand stitching on it. Yeah, I suppose shopping for new fabric <laughs> is an option too. Oh man, it's gonna kill me. I don't know, we'll have to play around. I think. Uh, I think there's opportunity, for sure, for flexibility and ideas, which, I don't know, it's pretty neat. It's too far ahead of me, ahead of me, I need to get these guys done. This one's fun. This, this just kills me. This is such a goofy fabric. It's, it looks like velvet just because they have like a dark and a light blue in here, which makes it look fuzzy, but it's really not. And then just that gold scrolly stuff is just 
such a weird kind of regal fabric, but it, I don't know, introducing it into this quilt it is, I don't know, there's something funny about that fabric. Like, I feel like without that fabric, like, this looks way kind of more modern a little bit uh, compared to with that sc funny scroll work one in there, but I don't know. I had to have it. <laughs> it was just too fun. I like that idea of sparkly embroidery. And I'd be using up some embroidery floss too, which is nice. I'm in the, that's what, why the whole fabric buying thing that, that I had to have all this was just like, oh my God, because I've been trying to this year use up fabric that I have, like, like I'm feeling good about using it. Like I have, um, um, I have fabric that I've had on my shelf for ages and I'm finally okay with using my fabric and not letting it just be pretty on the wall. <laughs> like I'm actually excited about using it now and I feel like I'm honoring the fabric by using it in things and uh, that I bought more fabric instead of using the fabric I had was just like a uh, sheesh. Oh you're picking up your quilt from the quilting lady! Exciting Jennifer! How cool is that? Oh, this one's way off. My I didn't center this one very well. See, I didn't I didn't nest the seam very well, so it's a little off center there. How exciting! That's gonna be like the best present getting getting your quilt back from the quilter. Oh, thanks, Diane. Yeah, it's um these definitely feel like colors that I would pick out, but for some reason it doesn't, I don't know, putting them all together feels, felt different for me, and uh, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see <clears throat> what comes of it. Oh, here's one where there's a uh, same color on one side and different on the other. I think that's kind of neat. I like that effect with where one's equal. Oh, we have a, it's getting late already. Oh no, we got, we'll do this for another 10 minutes or so at least. We might not get all of the pressing done, but I would like to, like to try and get the pressing part done. Cause it would be nice to just get going with, um, Here's my stack yet. <laughs> It'd be nice to just get with the trimming tomorrow because I know that's going to take a while. But yeah, that'd be awesome if Friday tomorrow we could get all the trimming done. That might take the whole time. Oh, look how pretty this one is. With, with these blues here, it almost makes this one look a little more blue instead of green, which is funny because I always read this as green, but now next to the blues, it looks blue. But yeah, so if we could get all the trimming done on Friday, that means Monday when I come back here, we can start playing with um, playing with layout. Could always press off camera. I don't have to worry about. Could always press off camera. I'm not sure what you mean, Sherry. Oh, I could press this kind of press. I thought you meant like press like a button. Yeah, I could. But I'm having fun chatting with you guys. So we'll we'll trim trim tomorrow. Oops. Let's put that Trim tomorrow and start laying it out on on Monday. I'd like to at least make a decision on Monday. So maybe on Monday I'll grab some different fabrics. I'm also driving home on Monday, so Monday might actually be up in the air uh, if I'm able to get here on time. But in theory, Monday I'll be back. 
um, after the weekend. Um, but if I'm not, then it'll be Tuesday. But either Monday or Tuesday, we will. I'll pull some fabrics that could be possible borders or sashing or whatever, and um, we'll start playing with ideas like what would it look like offset or what would it look like with a big border and, and all that, and then we'll just decide. So by our next, uh, after we trim, so that's tomorrow, but by the video after that for this project, I'm hoping we'll have a decision made and we'll have started uh, started what the final look of this quilt is going to be. We'll just have to make a decision and live with it. That's that's the goal. We can still adjust a along the way, but you know, in theory, we'll have decided for the most part if we're doing sashing or blocks in between or just a big border or whatever. This one's cute too. It's uh, going to be walleye weekend when I go visit my parents, <laughs> uh, which is like this big town festival that we always went to when we were little. Kind of excited that it'll be just so silly. Walleye weekend. Oh man, this stack is kind of never ending. We gotta be at least halfway though, I would think. But yeah, if it gets to be, um, we'll, we'll uh, stop uh, tonight around 10.30, especially if there's, if it still looks like I have a ton of, ton of um, blocks to go yet. I'll just, I will, I think I will press them uh, off screen if it gets to be around 10.30. So that's pretty late, and then, then I'm not holding you guys any longer. Unless you want to hang out yet, I will just keep pressing. I think that's definitely all we'll get, get through tonight. But we're getting there. Stack's getting smaller. Oh, funny. So, all right, I know exactly where we are in the stack because my seam allowances just went the other direction. So that means I am now on the other, you know how we divided the stacks, the ones that are dark to light and then light to dark? We have switched to whatever was opposite. So um, we're either just over half or just under halfway done. I'm hoping just over half. Oh yeah, but now I gotta get my bearings. Because now the seams go the other direction. There we go. This one's pretty striking with this the double the double creams. But yeah, look at the all that gold sparkle in there. still though. Alright. Oh, I love these greens. See now in this case, this is like opposite of what we were talking about. In this case, this one feels green because it's next to those greens, uh, these two greens. But in that other one, it felt more bluish when it was next to the blues. Just kind of funny, funny color thing. Oh, now here we have two of those next to each other. See, now here it looks kind of bluish again because it's next to the blue. Isn't that funny? I'm fighting the urge to count how many are left. <laughs> All right. 
Eh, we got maybe about 10, 10 to 12 left, maybe. I think we'll, I'll just keep going with them. We'll go till we're done pressing tonight, even if we go a little over. I just really wanted this step done, all the pressing. Show up. Okay, you know what, guys? I think I am going to do the rest of these. Oh, in a little bit. I'll do those off screen uh, just so we can wrap it up tonight. But here we go. We got all of these done. I want to kind of lay them out quick so we can see see what we got going on here. I'll go angle it like this. Let's just put them next to each other. I'm excited to start seeing what the whole like patchwork of it all is going to look like. I'm kind of rotating them so it goes darks and then like so they're like rotated like that. I don't know if you'll get that effect with the fabrics I chose, but you know, it'll be fun to see. It's looking quilty. Oh look. Um, look at this effect that I'm, I'm getting over here by putting similar colors together. We have um, a little pinwheel going here. So that's something you might want to do if you're working on your quilt. Um, putting like ones to get together like that uh, to get, get pinwheels in your quilt. Neat effect you can do with our glasses. But there we go, we have the start of a quilt right there. So it might, we might go like this, really patchworky. Uh, or, or like I was saying, we could do every other one uh, with like white in the middle and, or a cream, and that could look really pretty too. You know, it would make the whole thing a little bit bigger. Oh man, I kind of like this too. Uh, imagine that, that these are like white squares of fabric. I don't know, there's options. This would definitely make the whole thing bigger as well. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm excited for uh, when we talk about that on, on Monday. So all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around. There, hello. So I think that's good for tonight. Uh, we went through all these. I do like when the doubles show up and actually that happened quite a bit. Here's another one, but you know, not all of them are like that. Uh, some are scrambled. I think uh, it's going to just look really patchworky and neat. Uh, yay! So we got a lot done. I didn't think we'd get that far tonight, but we sewed all of those, that one nice big long chain sewing, and I'm almost done pressing. Not, not quite though, uh, but I think I'll just try and get through those yet tonight. So tomorrow we will just trim, and it'll be on location at my parents' house, and hopefully we hear the frogs. Uh, that'll be fun. So thanks again, guys, for coming in. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And uh, we'll keep going with this quilt. I think this is still, I'm still considering this a nice, quick quilt, even though I keep making it a bigger and bigger project. But eh, that's what happens. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. I will catch you tomorrow. Um, you're the bestest. See you later.